place up there for this audience to see. Um, and it, there are displays of courage and vulnerability and, and fearlessness and all of that stuff that, that could be very difficult for us to experience. But also, I want to take this off, but also to share. So, um, Doris, let's start with you. I mean, I know this is the first time you saw this film. What is it like seeing this part of your life in this way, in your family's life? The, the fortune to um, see it's and bits of the film in the process as I was a part of curating the music for the film and it's every step of the way I mean it's um, you relive trauma you know and I think it's allowed me to process years unearthing a lot of complex emotions of just the experience of being that first gen daughter of immigrants and it's honestly been extremely healing uh, throughout the way and has provided so much perspective of just what it's meant for me to fulfill like my wildest dreams in order to give back to my parents sacrificing their wildest dreams, you know? Um, so, tan agradecida, papi, te quiero, mami, te quiero. Carlos, I love you so much. Yeah, they're here. Gracias. <laughs> yes. Can you guys stand oh, yeah. up there in the white? Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's Carlos. <laughs> so that's what I was going to say. Thank, thanks, y'all, for believing in every single crazy thing I've ever wanted to do. And thank you for opening your lives for this. <laughs> when I... um. It's just a full circle moment, you know, like when you have those like kid dreams of possibly this happening, but I never imagined it would be in this way. So thank you, Isabel, for seeing me. And and thank you, Jax, for being down for this, too. Like, you're an angel. <laughs> This is the first time Jax has seen it ever. This is the first time I ever saw this. This is insane. Like, I sounded ridiculous. <laughs> no. No, yeah, for me, it was, it was insane. It was, um, I never really imagined this moment to actually come to life. Um, you know, like, little me is literally dreaming about this oh, my whole entire life. I never believed in myself. I always thought, you know, maybe it's time to give up. You know, my parents don't believe in me, so might as well just go ahead and just quit on everything. But I never really thought that people really believed in me for who I was and for my art until I met Doris and, and Isabel and you know, the cast, the crew, Tabs and then Yesenia, all of those people. I, you know, I, I just wanna say one thing, you know, whenever you have a dream, you just gotta go forward and do it. It doesn't matter who doesn't believe in you because those people will believe in you one day when you do it. Thank you. Speaking, speaking of broken microphones. <laughs> speaking of dreams, Isabel, tell us why you made this film and what, what was your process? Why was it important to you to make it the way that you made it? Oh my God, I, <laughs> whew, whew, uh, I can't look at them. Um, <laughs> um, I, uh, <sighs> Get it together. Um, I got it. Um, I, you know, I I came from here from Mexico when I was really young. I my diff my uh, experience was very different from from theirs, but um, I I just didn't grow up with any role models to look up to, even just like physically, emotionally. Like I just was really craving it um, in, uh, I, I, in the place that I grew up in. And I think that um, it's part of what motivates my work. Um, but I also just like, I'm so sick and tired of all immigration stories, just being the same and sounding the same and f like fitting bipartisan agendas. And they really miss the truth of the emotional experience of what it means to be an immigrant in this country. It's not just pain and suffering, it's joy, it's guilt, it's, it's a lot of other emotions. And, um, and I'm just, I'm so grateful and in so in awe that 
Doris and Jack's opened up their lives to show that to people. Um, and so that, that was my biggest goal for this film, was to you know tell a different kind of immigration story. And I'm just grateful that they signed up for it. Well, you're absolutely right, because it, we, we've developed a shorthand for immigration stories, and um, they're often mired in sort of victimhood, right? And I know this because I come from a mixed status extended family. The layers of complexity, but also the joy, I, there are few moments in film I've ever seen as powerful as, uh, Doris, your parents in that moment when they get their green cards and then when they see your brother. And that says what this is all about when we talk about denying people of their basic human dignity for the right to exist and that it's become abstract. And that moment really captures so much. So I really have to commend, you know, uh, Isabel for you capturing that moment, but you sharing that. Um, and it, it's such a powerful moment. And there's the other layers are that the, the aspirations and the expectations around first generation children, I'm a first generation child too, and the expectations around specific, specific definitions of, of success. And artistry is not one of those. And I have to say that in life and in this film, and all of you here display a courage because you are taking a path less traveled. Probably could be doctors, lawyers, accountants, and this, that, and the other but you are pursuing something bigger and greater and you really deserve a lot of credit um, because you are creating paths for that role model ship that Isabel was talking about. And that's the beauty of, of I think, of this film and, and why I hope it'll resonate with, with audiences. Um, and what me. <laughs> now, that, um, now that the film is out, right? Um, uh, I'll start with, with, with you, Jax. What are your aspirations now the film is out there, your story is out there? What do you want to come of this? What do you, tell us. Um, I just wish I might Here, take this one. Um, I just hope my parents come to the conclusion and you know, that they would 100%, you know, they support me, but they would just 100% get it. And, um, uh, after this film, I'm going to continue doing my art and continue doing what I have to do to be successful. And um, I, one, one day, I just want to inspire a lot of people. And we want to inspire a lot of people, you know, Doris and I. She's got to get signed. Yeah. Oh, we got to sign what her. <laughs> what the record exec yeah. here? Let, oh, Any record execs out there? Gotta sign, <laughs> sign this girl. She's a star. So I'm all right. <laughs> I saw my performance. I could have done a little bit. No, no. Ah. I'm just playing. I mean, that's like every artist is, you know. But um, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you, Doris. You know, for allowing me to be in your in the, in the film, and your film, and your life. This is very amazing. And thank you, Isabel. You saying everyone that was behind this film. It was crazy. I just want to continue doing what I have to do and and just keep telling everyone, you know, you can do it. It doesn't matter who you are, what you, where you come from. You can do anything you want to do. Thank you. Doris, what do you want? Um, <laughs> well, y'all saw us through a whole journey, but I think uh, specifically, like, opening up, like, this pivot in my career and... I have been grappling over that over the last couple of years since the pandemic basically shut down the music industry and it's revived it. And I've been trying to find my footing on what my next step was, was going to be, you know, and a lot of open doors and then shut doors and, and being tossed around in the midst of all of it. But I think the overarching goal is that I've always, I've always had this feeling of wanting to, support like our community but like at just like at a, a like a really out of this world large scale always thought of that way since I was a kid and I saw that come to fruition with Kuko and then when I met Jax I was like I'm trying to understand how to even fit in her world or how to be supportive in that way and, and what doors I can even open just again to contribute to the overarching goal of being able to create impact through music like we we found a way we found our lane and we burned 
all the way through it. And so I'm learning how to juggle the many hats um, that have been thrust upon me and that I've been put on myself. And um, at the end of the day, it's like, we're able to lead the way and open doors and continue this movement so people can go on their own and, and continue to create their own paths. And thankfully, I've been very blessed to do that through music as well. And it's been a full circle moment for me throughout this whole journey uh, to return to music myself. And, and so I've kind of been thrown into a blender of of life and been presented the opportunity to return to, to that. You know, I, I was very fortunate to be raised by a family of, of musicians, of creatives uh, that utilized it in a very different way. So they weren't necessarily like understanding uh, of me tapping into the world of like secular music. If you were raised in the church, you know what's, what's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's always been music. It's always been understanding um, that people need to be understood, you know, and to feel seen and heard and represented. And um, I'm in the middle of like my Saturn return right now too. So it's like discovering my purpose and and that really reconciling with myself that my purpose is sharing my voice, whether it is through my story or through music. And so, yeah, I will, I will continue to do that. And um, I'm very grateful that, you know, like you made me believe in myself again too, Jack. So thank you. You, you are carrying on the spiritual power and the transformational power of music and it, it is clear so uh, you're never far from God when you're carrying music and Isabel I, this is your world premiere your first film yes. Sundance Woo! this that and the other Where are you going to take this, and where are the people, how, where do you want this to go? What, what do you want it to do in the world? Well, and where the buyers at? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're hiding, hiding behind the record executive. I do that. Solicitation. Yeah, yeah it's it's sold the... and all that. <laughs> um, I would like the film to find a platform. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and no, I, I really, I, I, I just want to reach as wide of a pos uh, as possible of an audience, um, truly. And I was talking about it with Doris this morning. I just, I hope the film can possibly just change, you know, a couple dozen people's minds about immigration. That's my ultimate dream. Just a couple dozens at a time. So, um... Yeah. So and this is for one for any one of you. Just final thoughts, final the journey, the purpose, where you are. What's your send off for this audience <laughs> before Mr. Munoz brings you the flowers? Are we just waiting for the flowers? Let's do this. Oh, no, no, this is more important. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, final thoughts. Wow, what is this? You know, I, I um, like you heard in the film, like I was very aware that I was born into a mixed status family. You know, I, I was aware of the emergency plan. Um, if I were to come home one day from school and no one was home, I was aware of of Brother the privilege Bob? that I held. Hey, I uh, hi, Bob. There's well, more. I'm right. the delivery man over here. On, um, but my my brothers gave me real tough love, but it was a reminder that I had the keys to this country, and it was called a social security number mm. that millions of people don't have so to do the basic things, to drive, to have a job, to have an opportunity to go to college. And... I, I needed this film when I was a kid to give me hope because I have a daydream of the moment that my dad would be able to reunite with his brothers. One day, you, you didn't see, there were so many reunions that happened. Uh, there were so many reunions that happened. See, my dad hugged his brothers for the first time in over 32 years. 
it's something that I replayed in my head over and over and over again as a child. And to now have those kinds of moments immortalized is something that I will forever be grateful for you for, Isabel. Thank you. Okay, I was trying to go easy on the audience. It's a lot of emotions. Um, one takeaway. Um, I just, I just hope that I really do hope that young uh, Latinx audiences will see this and be inspired to make films, to make music, to just pursue their creative ambitions. Um, you know, I talk about how I love the Billie Eilish doc. I love it, but it's about, I don't know if y'all have seen it. It's about how her family really supports her, you know, um, and I hope this film shows how much more difficult it is um, for immigrant families uh, and immigrant um, creators to pursue their dreams. So that's my hope that filmmakers, cinematographers, editors, um, singers will watch this and be like, ah, oh, you know, maybe I can do it too. Thank you. So we should out. Thank you so much. And it's screening throughout the Sundance Film Festival online, and people can log on to it. Yeah, I don't know the past, though. Do you, do you Google it. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And there's a reception outside. Oh, Ruth. Oh, my mom. Lars, for Ruth. Oh, Senora Munoz. Okay. It's a grand gesture moment, y'all. It's a grand gesture. Oh, yeah. Where's my camera? I find beautiful. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you all for, for sitting through very emotional moments. Um, that was a roller coaster. Uh, made y'all cry, huh? <laughs> um, well, thank you, puppy. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll head out to the lobby. There's a reception out there. We'll clear out the theater because they have to do a, a tech check.